So I wonder if the capacitors are something to do with timing holding some power for a certain amount of time because a different size capacitor will hold energy for different amounts of time. The bigger the capacitor the more energy well in theory the more energy it can store and therefore could power an LED for longer. I assume that's what's going on here, although I could be wrong again. Snip these off. And these. <coughs> okay. <coughs> <coughs> now it's the LEDs. Now, the LEDs, you should find that there's a, a flat piece over there on the negative. If I just show you here, hopefully you'll be able to see. You see on this negative lead here, there's like a flat piece to the right, and the other piece is more round. So the flat piece obviously goes in the flat piece there, like that. Oh, they've done the holes quite tight here as well, so that so that they stay in place. So that's good. be easier for soldering. Right, I'll make sure that these are in correctly, all of them. Yep, because the polarity changes. As you can see here, I don't know what to do there, so I'll leave that one for now. This one goes in here, so the shorter lead goes to the flat part. <coughs> shorter lead to the flat part and shorter lead to the flat part again so we've got two LEDs left and what's going on here well that's obviously the shorter lead there and the other one which is L6 I'm not too sure about so let's just double check this here so L6, what's going on? Well, I can see on the track there that that is um, that this here is ground. This one is ground. You see how all the shorter leads are attached to it. So therefore, it must be like that. The shorter one in that track. And that's it. So <coughs> I could do it pushing those down, but because I've soldered that capacitor in there, I won't be able to put it flat. So um, I guess I'll I guess I'll just leave them and solder them. I'll try and hold them as I solder. Should work all right. So start with this one. Yeah, in fact, I'll do one lead at a time. Okay, so I should be able to whiz through the um, <coughs> the anodes. Looking well, isn't it? No problem there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Seven. Almost feel like I'm um, uh, learning a new language or something. You know, going through numbers like that. I've been repeating numbers quite a lot recently because I'm, well, not recently, but I've been learning Polish. I've been repeating to myself jeden, dwa, trzy, cztery, etc. Um, anyway, <coughs> snip these leads off and. Then go for some wire. Got some wire somewhere. In fact, you've seen my uh, my stores. I did a video on on it a few weeks ago. So I'll just go and get some wire, and then <coughs> we'll test it out and see what it does.
Okay, it's looking well. Yeah, so now I'm going to get some wire. So here's my wire, I've got different types, silicone wire and whatever else, but it would be just be easier to use these. So I use a red one and is there a black one? No, there's no black one. That's strange. Well I'll use green instead. So <coughs> red and green. So the way this thing works is that you solder them there like that and then you thread the wire through. Or you can do it the other way, you can do it this way. So five well five volts through there because that's the plus and then you lean it in like that and then solder it. So oh this is a bit fiddly. Okay well I'll tell you what then I'll do it this way. Get that to hold the wire. So which one is it? It's plus it's the one on that end. There we go. And now I'll get this one to hold. Wow, these are very useful. Push it down onto the wire. There we go. Hold helping hands for very good reason. That's the plus, and now the minus. Minus, there we go. Just wiggle that around a little bit. That should do. And <clears throat> there we go there, so that's done and I'll just feed that through so these these now uh, get fed through this hole like that until they're very tight and this one of course the same <coughs> just like that it looks okay doesn't it and I guess this might as well hold it so next thing I'm going to do is give it some voltage now um, <coughs> How much voltage is it going to need? I'm going to play it safe for now because I really don't know. I'm going to play it safe and say it's going to need 3.3 3 volts. Just turn my um, my solder light off. So now 3.3 mm -mm, should be safe for 3.3. 3.3 3 .3. Okay. <coughs> connect that to there and ground connect ground and we should see something yeah there we go <coughs> so uh, what is it going to do let's put this up here yeah what is it going to do let's press it so it says L10. Oh, actually, I know what this is. This is a. This looks like some sort of random number generator, is it? Eight. Ah, oh, right. Okay, it picks a random number. It seems. Seven. Eight. Five. Seven, nine. Let's see how long it takes to get a two. Five. We seem to be getting the same numbers. I hope not. Six. I'll stop when I get a two. Chances of getting number two should technically be one in ten, but ah, oh, there we go. We've got a two. So um, that's the end of this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Bye! So let's have a look at this CD4017B um, and find out what it is. So it says here CMOS counter divider. 
and um, it says 10 decoded outputs 10 decoded outputs okay so uh, what does it say? These counters are advanced. One counts as a positive clock signal transition if the clock inhibit signal is low. Blah, 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 blah. A, re a high reset signal clears the counter to its zero count. And it's high speed operation. Blah, blah, blah. Carry out signal completes one cycle every 10 clock input cycles or every 8 clock in that one. Yeah, so it's basically a, a counter. Um, <clears throat> so it seems to be counting something. Now, I think what it's doing is it's counting something random in order to get uh, a random number between 1 to 10. At least that's what I think it's doing. Um, yeah. So there we go.